This is the video addendum to the fourth episode of the German Auto Podcast by Dub Auto Works. And in episode four, we spoke briefly about how secondary air injection systems function and how to diagnose them. I felt the topic was a little bit too in-depth for just a podcast, and some people might need the visual aids. So I decided to put together this uh, video just to show how it functions. You can subscribe to the podcast at dubautoworks.com slash podcast, or listen to this specific episode at dubautoworks.com slash episode four. Secondary air injection system is a mechanism installed on a vehicle that blows filtered air into the exhaust stream, either in the cylinder head or exhaust manifold, in order to allow partially combusted air to be fully catalyzed on cold start now what does that mean basically what that means is that the combustion process is so inefficient on cold start that you get a lot of raw unburned hydrocarbons exiting the cylinders and going into the exhaust and it is the job of the catalytic converter to ignite those gases and catalyze them so as many as possible can be consumed and not be emitted into the atmosphere on cold start, there's actually not enough oxygen in the uh, exhaust to get that done. So you need the catalytic converter to heat up as quickly as possible. Now some American vehicles actually had what they called a smog pump, which was a belt driven pump that did this uh, in the 80s and 90s. Um, but basically the German car companies didn't want something that was creating a draw on the engine at all times when it really didn't need to be. This is the system that they designed and its purpose is to inject oxygen into the exhaust stream to allow the catalytic converter to reach its light off temperature as quickly as possible and thereby stop emissions as quickly as possible. So this is the secondary air pump. Its function is to force the air into the exhaust. Um, it actually draws air from the air filter housing through one of these hoses shown here and then it sends it uh, as pressurized air to the combi valve uh, which is bolted on the side of the cylinder head or to the exhaust manifold itself. The combi valve is actually either triggered by a vacuum uh, through its vacuum port to pull it open or some of them are actually just forced open by the actual pressure from the secondary air pump. If they are actually pulled open by a vacuum then the vehicle also has a solenoid called a secondary air injection solenoid and the job of that solenoid is to open and allow intake manifold vacuum to travel through it and pull the combi valve open uh, so that it can allow the air pump flow through it. The secondary air solenoid actually is fed uh, directly from intake manifold vacuum through a vacuum hose. Uh, that vacuum hose goes to it and then it leaves it and it goes down to the combi valve and when the valve closes uh, it allows that bottom port on the secondary air solenoid to vent the air through the cap on the top of the valve and allow the valve to shut. So the system basically functions as follows. The vehicle starts, the ECM or engine control module determines the coolant temperature and the intake temperature and determines that they're cold. The ECM triggers the secondary air pump relay which triggers the pump and it gives a ground to the secondary air pump solenoid which is provide a power through the fuel pump relay. Then the intake vacuum travels through the secondary air solenoid to the diaphragm in the combi valve and opens it allowing secondary air from the pump to be pushed into the exhaust manifold or cylinder head. The most common failures of this system are broken vacuum lines either going to the secondary air injection pump solenoid or to the combi valve from the solenoid or for the pressure pipe to be broken going from the pump to the combi valve. It is noteworthy that if the hose is broken from the air filter housing to the pump that will not cause a fault but over time, the entry of dirt and water into the system can cause problems. Also, many of the pumps are riveted together and the rivets have been known to sort of start coming uh, out and that'll cause the pump to work itself apart. The bearing uh, preload will become excessive and the pumps will begin to fail. These pumps are hundreds of dollars. So normally what we'll do is take bolts of the right diameter and put them into the pump to fix it. Now the diagnosis of the system is fairly straightforward. You want to start by visually inspecting the vacuum hoses, pipes, and the pump. And then if you have a scan tool, you'll run output diagnostic test mode in the engine computer while you listen that the pump and the secondary air solenoid function. If that happens, you start the engine, hold it at 2000 RPM, and then shut it off so that you can run the output test again. This time, you're going to pull a vacuum manually on the combi valve 
with a hand pump and then feel to see if the air is coming through the engine and out the exhaust at the back of the vehicle. If you don't have a scan tool, diagnosis is a little bit more difficult because you're going to have to get some wires to power up the components manually. So if you don't have a scan tool, you want to power up the secondary air pump with two wires coming straight from the battery and they have to be, you know, as big of a diameter as the size that feeds the pump which is I think about 12 gauge or something like that. Sometimes the pump will also make a lot of noise and then you're going to need to look and see if the rivets are coming out of it and you need to bolt it back together. But after you do that, then you're going to pull vacuum on the combi valve manually with a hand vacuum pump. You can pick these up at Harbor Freight for pretty cheap. While you're doing that, you're going to power the pump up and you're going to feel at the rear at the exhaust tip to see if there's a lot of air coming through the exhaust or not you can kind of pull the pipe off the secondary air pump and just feel how much that thing puts out. It puts out a pretty decent amount. If you are getting air coming through the exhaust, that means there's a problem with the secondary air solenoid. So either the vacuum lines are bad or that solenoid isn't functioning. So at that point, you can take power and ground from the battery or from a power probe or some other source, and you're gonna actually trigger power and ground to that solenoid and see if it clicks. If it does click, then either there's a mechanical problem with the valve like it's clogged or there's something wrong with the vacuum lines going from the manifold to the solenoid or the solenoid to the combi valve so if it is clicking try to blow through a hose that's connected to it and make sure that when the valve is off you cannot blow through it you might be able to blow through one direction and get air coming out of that breather cap on the top but you should not be able to get any air going from one port to the other port now when you turn the valve on, you should be able to blow through the one port and it will go directly through the other side. If that's functioning, that means your vacuum lines are either clogged or they're not hooked up right. If you cannot pull a vacuum on the combi valve and get the air to go through the engine from the pump, then you need to remove the valve and check to see if it's physically stuck or possibly the cylinder head is clogged. So you'd run the engine with the valve removed and see if you get exhaust air exiting that port. Carbon or contaminants can build up in there and prevent that from happening. Thank you so much for watching the podcast. I hope I've helped you fix your secondary air faults. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me at danny at dubautoworks.com. And as always, listen to the podcast and help support us. And we'll continue to help try and support you and help you keep the cost of ownership of your German vehicle as low as possible for years to come.